Hi, and welcome to the Poster Pack Rat. If you like video game art as much as I do, then you might like this channel. If that's true, please click those like and subscribe buttons. I've been a promo collector for three and a half years, and I've learned a few things that I'd like to share. I'm also wanting to catalog my poster collection and promote the goodness of promo collecting. Most of my channel's focus will be on retail posters. These were posters that were hung in shops like Babbage's, Electronics Boutique, and in the office of arcade distributors. They were used to sell products to the masses, and as such, they pack a visual punch meant to hit you square in the amygdala. My long-standing advice is if you buy a reprint, you're throwing away your money. Originals will always look better and appreciate in value. Today, it is my honor to show you this very rare promo from 1988. So rare, in fact, this YouTube video might be the only documented evidence of its existence online. As you can see, this poster is promoting the first half of R-Type on the PC Engine. And it's so rare, I have no idea if there's a follow-up poster for the second half. If you have any information on that, please leave a comment or get in touch with me. Let's talk about R-Type for a minute for those not familiar. The game was originally developed by IRM in 1987. Key staff would later split from the company and form Nazca Corporation. Those are the same guys responsible for producing the Metal Slug series on the Neo Geo. So there's a fine pedigree of talent and design behind this game. R-Type evolved horizontal shooters with the inclusion of a new gameplay mechanic called the Force. This had nothing to do with Star Wars. The Force is a shield and weapons turret that can be placed in front or behind the player's spacecraft. It can also be hurled at enemies, and when playing the game, it feels similar to throwing and catching a softball. In the world of shooters, nothing plays like our type. Every time I cross paths with it in an arcade, I feel compelled to deposit a quarter out of respect. In 1988, you couldn't hire the original devs to port games to consoles. Quality staff was limited, and this required engineers who possessed a complete technical understanding of the hardware, in this case the PC Engine, so all the reprogramming came from in-house at Hudson. I consider this port of R-Type to be so masterful, it's one of the finest accomplishments in games programming history. When I think of this release, I also think of Yuji Naka's port of Daimaki Mura on the Mega Drive. For those who don't know, that's Ghouls and Ghosts on the Sega Genesis. And that's another shiny example of willpower and resolve. These programmers were perfectionists. They would not give up. I can imagine them programming 24 hours a day, 6 days a week, and only resting on Sundays. The only negative to this release was that in 1988, Hudson didn't have higher capacity U cards. So they had to split the game across two releases spread a few months apart. Hence, this retail poster is advertising the first half of the game, levels 1 through 4. Imagine buying Super Mario World and getting only half the game. Our type on the PC Engine was so good, people did that. This poster is a B3 size Japanese retail poster. The B sizing in Japan starts at 0 and goes up to 7. As the numbers increase, the total poster size gets cut by half. If you were to position two B3 size posters side by side, together they'd equal a single B2 poster. This poster is a little beat up or well loved, but there's no pinholes. You can see edge damage and scuffs, but no torn pieces, no flaking of the screenshots. So I considered a good candidate for poster restoration, but I'd only restore a poster if I was planning to frame and hang it. Once you linen back a poster, that can lower its resale value. I believe it goes down because preservation techniques are always improving and buyers don't want yesterday's methods. As a warning to new poster collectors, I'd be hesitant to buy a poster showing damage on large screenshots. I've used restoration services more than once, and they're wizards at fixing a ton of different problems, but I have serious doubts they can repaint the fine detail of screenshots and wouldn't bother trying. You're better off saving your money and buying other posters. Paperweight on this specimen is light to medium, and it has a faint gloss on its front and back. 
Now let's talk poster. And when you love something, that should entitle you to be brutally honest. Well, this one's a clusterfuck. I think the original layout designers came from Japanese gaming mags like Famitsu or Gamist. Every panel or screenshot has Japanese text on it, so this poster is attempting the impossible. It's trying to appeal to our sense of wonder and educate us at the same time. And there's simply too much of that going on here. If this poster was in English instead of Japanese, I'd feel exactly the same way. I suspect there was a mid-level boss at Hudson who thought the art was too complicated or confusing and it required book learning for explanation. So overall, I consider the design muddled, but there's still a lot for us to enjoy, so let's do that. Similar to last week's Metroid Prime Pinball, I like the art in the top panel of this poster, and it resembles the game very strongly, but in an illustrative way. From a distance, if you blur your eyes, you could be viewing a screenshot. I also like the heavy metal style airbrushing used in the R-Type logo. The bright primaries and secondary primaries in the lattice supporting the screenshots is also visually appealing. And I like how we're almost looking at a pyramid or altar leading to the top panel art. Almost every level from the first half of the game is represented here. And for players like myself who struggle with the random patterns of the fourth boss, we're only viewing our achievements. And the street date and price makes everything nice. We also have information on the release for the second half of the game. So all in all, a very complicated retail poster for a much beloved classic. On to final thoughts for this video. I suggest using the Google Translator app on your phone to decipher all the details. This poster is a magnificent treasure from 1988, and it's an honor to present it to you and subsequent viewers. Maybe this once, I'm confident in saying you saw it here first on the poster pack rat. Please hit that like and subscribe button, and I just might be able to do that again. To my Japanese viewers, if you know of or have seen images of a follow-up promo poster for this game, that would be R-Type 2, levels 5 through 8, please get in touch with me. I'd love to speak with you and learn more about that poster. And that's it for this week, promo fans. Thank you all for watching. I'll be back in seven days with a look at Konami and a heartful ensemble cast. Some would even call them a group of vandals. Bye for now.